Hey guys, this is Barry bringing you 12 tables of 10 and 0 at Full Tilt Poker. The reason I'm making this video is I received a few comments and private messages on YouTube um, after posting my last video that showed my Poker Tracker 3 results. They were saying, How is it possible that you were playing 1200 hands an hour? Uh, that's impossible, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm actually at 16 tables. I can only record 12 on one screen and I can't do two recordings. But uh, I'm at 16 tables right now and yes, it is less efficient than, well, I, I'm not going to say less efficient. Um, you can't do as deep of reads and like really think about situations, you know, too deeply when you're at so many tables. but. I find that at stakes like 10 and L, you want to be pr playing pretty much standard. It's going to be the most profitable way to play just because uh, it's difficult to know what level your opponent's at. And odds are that if they're at 10 and L, they're probably not too good. Um, so you don't need to get fancy or anything to, to make money at 10 and L. So I think it's uh, with that, it makes um, doing a lot of, you know, multi tabling. Um, it, it makes that a profitable scenario. Um, additionally, ooh, I just folded sevens there, that's not good. And that's, that's another downfall of doing this multi-table. At least for me, I, I tend to, to misclick, uh, here and there. It's not a huge deal, and again, like, okay, I folded sevens there, I probably shouldn't have, but it's not like some big, huge deal, and I'm losing tons of money or anything like that as a result. Um, so this guy just called me two streets. He could have hands like four or five, ace, deuce, pocket fives, uh, maybe hit that queen. I don't think I'm going to get him to fold with a third barrel, so I'm going to check at the uh, bottom right table down here. So he did indeed have ace, deuce. Actually, we probably could have got him to fold that, but we didn't know he specifically had that hand. So this guy's bet 30 cents. That could be a draw that may have just made it. So I'll be check folding this turn. Oh man, 30 cents again. Still got a fold. Deuce is no good here. Uh, also, if you're wondering, the uh, a piece of software I'm using is called Table Ninja. And it basically allows me to make bets and actions with hotkeys instead of using the mouse and it it takes a lot of the clicking out of the game which can just speed up speed it up a little bit more uh so here we have a pretty dry board good for a for a bet uh nines isn't doing too well on this board so I'll just go ahead and fold So another thing when you're doing a lot of tables like this, you will likely be uh, playing a little bit tighter. And I think that's okay as well. Like when you get to higher stakes, you'll need to obviously loosen up so you're not so predictable. But again, at, uh, at 10 and L for the most part, and obviously this doesn't apply to all players, but a lot of players here, um, they're really only concerned with their hand and they're not thinking too much about the hand that you have. So... It doesn't even really matter if you play quote unquote uh, an exploitable game. That's and by that I mean like you know not being too well balanced and you know betting primarily value hands, not mixing in air. So players, um, you know, they know that you usually have a hand when you're betting. It doesn't matter because if they have a hand too, they're just gonna call. So that's the trick. So general strategy is if I hit a big hand, like just go bet, 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 and hopefully get paid. So this guy's called me down twice now. I obviously think I have the best pair, but the question is, do I check back? Um, I think because there are so many draws on this board, there's lots that he could have missed. So I want to get value out of those and not just get them to fold. Um, but on the flip side, if he has a single queen, he might just check back um, 
but I think I want to get value out of those missed draws, and I know he's aggressive. I know he'll float in position, so I think I could check to him and uh, get him to bet. Yes, he does bet. So, but I don't know if I want to check raise because am I going to get called by worse? I don't think so. I think I'm only getting called by better if I check raise, so I'll just go ahead and just call with two pair. And uh, good, perfect perfect read on the situation he did have that flush draw we knew he was aggressive and uh, we just let him hang himself there and check raising would have been pretty pointless because he would have just folded so really like the play up here at the uh, top left table And uh, sorry if it's like difficult to keep track of what table I'm talking about. Um, I'll try to say like, you know, a top left table, or like middle table or a point at it or whatever. But I uh, recognize there's a lot of action going on. And that's kind of another reason why I wanted to make this video is I probably won't have to do any editing to it or, you know, have have you guys have to go through like these dry, quiet spells. I mean, there's always going to be action with all these tables. So... I think it might make for a better video, but again, there's there's a lot going on, so I could see how some people wouldn't like it. Uh, if you guys do like it, let me know in the comments. If you don't, you know, dislike the video or whatever, it will just help me get that feedback so I can produce more videos that you guys actually want to see. Believe it or not, there's actually not very much action going on right now, even with all these tables. Um, so here I have ace jack. I was the preflop better, but we have um, eight, eight two queen, two spades. I don't think this is a great board to see bet with uh, two players behind in a four-way pot. I think it's just um, more than likely that someone has some piece of this board, so no real point in in uh, betting out I don't think so we'll just check fold it's fine um, here this guy's bet 49 cents our hand is most likely good so we'll check raise but I mean he could have an over pair bigger than ours so we have to be prepared to fold as well especially since he's so so deep you know, we're not deep so. so I thought I had double stack there for a sec we're only a hundred bigs effective. So the other thing that's good about you know doing the big multi tables is it's easier to make the the really disciplined folds um, like this one for example like this guy raises 4x is kinda out of the ordinary for these stakes so I'm gonna assume that he has a hand better than ace 10 and just fold this out of position whereas you know if I was playing at two tables or even four tables like it might take me a while before I even see a hand like ace ace 10 suited and then by the time you get it you're just gonna really wanna play it so that's another good thing that you can just make that fold and just know you're gonna have another hand to look at in in no time. There we pick up a small pot with aces, getting it in pre-flop, so he's good. So here with my pocket ace, just because an ace is flop doesn't mean I shouldn't see bet. I mean, if anything, I think you should see bet, and then you might get hands like pocket nines, pocket tens to fold. Um, but he does quickly call, so I assume he either has a pocket pair that has me beat, or he's got like some, he's got an ace, maybe a weak ace. 
Um, but I'm not going to try to get them to fold. It's, it's really hard to get guys to fold their hands at these stakes, so I'm not going to be trying that too often. And uh, I'll just assume my uh, eights are no good here. Players are not exactly, you know, floating out of position with air and then, you know, seeing, hoping that it goes check, check on the turn so they can bluff the river. That just doesn't really happen here. So I never, I'm never concerned that players are doing that. And uh, if they are, it's going to be so rare uh, to have a player of that caliber who's thinking that far ahead at these stakes. So if it does happen, I'm not, you know, I'm not giving away much. Oh, so this is not a great board, but it's kind of weak that he just led right in here for a half pot. So it could be a draw, and then we get this guy calling behind, so he could either have a draw or the queen. I think I'll call once and uh, see, what ha see what we can do on the turn. The 10 is not good, because I kind of feel like this guy may have been leading with a 10. Um, so I don't think jacks are any good here, so I'll just fold them here at this at this far left middle table. So really interested to see what he has. I think that this guy may have a 10 and this guy may have a flush draw or some kind of straight draw. Um, but I had the jack so we'll see. Okay he was leading with the flush draw and what did the other guy have? The other guy had a straight at the end so I actually was ahead there but I probably wouldn't have blown those guys off the hand and it was just impossible for me to know. Here I'm going for a 3-bet with ace-10 because it was a button open against two blinds, so I expect that range to be pretty wide and ace-10 to actually be ahead most of the time. So I think a 3-bet's good and people, they tend not to fold to 3-bets, but they tend to fold to the flop c-bets a lot, especially on dry boards. Like this is a pretty good board because his calling range after I three bet is gonna usually be higher cards and like pocket pairs and hands like that. So I don't I don't actually think that he's really strong here. I think he may have just been floating once and seeing if I'll barrel twice on the turn. So we follow up our C bet with another barrel. And he's either going to let us know right now if he has a hand or not. If he just flat calls, I've pretty much got to give up. Um, and he does. I can't really use that queen. I almost feel like maybe he has a set here. Um, but maybe not. Pocket sevens. So he did have the pocket pair. That's interesting. I, I, think he, I think those calls are pretty good by him. He played it okay. So we might have been able to induce that fold at the end though if we followed up with the third barrel, but just being out of position, it's really tough to play it that way. So here I get min raise, I have the flush, um, but there's a boat out there, you could have a higher flush, blah blah blah, so I'm just going to call. And uh, yeah, he hit the boat. I'm going to call one with the sevens, and uh, see if he checks back that ace, he does. 